place you do things mostly uh, for for a rather big part by intuition so you do you don't use reason I'm going to choose that or that way it's where you feel yourself at home where you feel where you can develop yourself uh, in which direction you can uh, tell the things you maybe have to, to, to tell. And I think that uh, in this very chaotical world, um, when I was young, I realized myself that uh, in a certain way you have uh, to um, to um, choose uh, the, the, uh, many to lean to to stand on the tradition of uh, the 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 painting of the country we are living with other I can tell it more uh, clear the, in 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 um, the Flanders there was a typical way of painting who, who where you felt the earth of, of uh, the, that country look at Permeek and and Wouters and I always admired when I come in a country when I see Watteau that's typical French the, the the Germans are more uh, graphical. Uh, every country has its character. In Breitner, you scent, you feel the atmosphere of the brown, deep brown colors of Amsterdam. And so nowadays, maybe it's the uh, American influence, all is more uh, in uh, cosmopolite. Is grown uh, cosmopolite, and um, I consider that as a earning, as as an um, how do you call that, in the, uh, a good thing. For me, apart from that, I consider that life is so short. Uh, you, I don't uh, am able to. Uh, Deepen the uh, my view in uh, painting in s the south of Italy, because you have to be born there. You have to be in, um, have long time with. It's difficult enough life uh, painting. So you can only do, uh, if you want to do something good, it's only possible to do it a small part of the big, uh, 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 big thing that is uh, art. So 
Breitner, because you call his name, let's consider Breitner, he did very good and made for me real uh, the, the Amsterdam atmosphere. Uh, the guy made for m m my um, eyes uh, forever, forever, it made it impossible for me to, to paint ballet dancers. Uh, he uh, um, uh, well, he uh, picked the the piece. So that I mean. Now speaking of ballet dancers, I noticed that you painted a lot of circus uh, characters. Yeah. Uh, I know there was another painter that was with Slauter's Kees Max, who also yeah. liked that. Yeah. Is this? kind of a Dutch tradition, the Kermis and the circus, or is this something that you just felt? No, no, that's not, not tradition. Uh, you know, you know, you give the name of, of Max, but he was an exception. Uh, in Holland, there were Germans, sorry, there were German painters, I remember, who painted also uh, uh, circus, Max Beckmann. But um, no, there's no tradition here. No, no. Because who made beautiful circus in his youth? Well, what drew you to the circus as a as something? I noticed you spent quite a long time working uh, on paintings of the circus. Is well, it something I, you I, felt? The the what what interested me was not. I did it many times, many times. I even uh, traveled with the circus to Belgium. In the piste, what you call piste. Uh, but before the act, when the clowns and the, all the artists are preparing their, number, their, their act. And then they are uh, studying, they are dancing, are already living in what they are going to do for the public uh, behind the curtains and that's really beautiful then uh, there i did a lot of drawings and uh, things now it also seems as i look through your paintings that uh, you've taken some time to paint Music, uh, at least uh, yeah. during a period of time. Is this something that influences your life, or something yeah, that yeah, you feel yeah, close sure. to? I, I did a, a, many, many seasons. I uh, had the opportunity to draw at um, Concertgebouw uh, repetition uh, rehearsals, and um, so you are alone in the in the place uh, with your orchestra, and, the, and that I can. Where I want it, so that it's an ideal uh, opportunity to to make a lot of things. And I had uh, an exhibition uh, only de dedicated to uh, the Concertgebouw. Now, coming up in the near future, you're going to um, have an exhibition about a small print shop where you've been working. To, uh, tell me a little about that and what yeah. drew you to this place. <laughs> I like, as you may uh, conclude out of my words, that I like a theme in in a uh, concertgebouw or, or uh, circus, and also this theme of a uh, uh, print shop where I worked uh, years drawing there. It was so that uh, my wife and I, walking in the Spiegelstraat uh, long ago, saw a shop like you sometimes, you see it more in Paris. Uh, a man who is uh, are surrounded by his prints or by his paintings and sits there in the middle of it and has become part of what he, what he sells and it is an enormous um, uh, uh, amount of things, and uh, there was the, the man in question, and a 
also light because behind in the shop there was a second uh, space with a light from from above which gave me um, the the, uh, which gave me the opportunity to to uh, to paint there, uh, and uh, I, yeah, I I asked him for that and um, uh, go growing the growing habit of drawing there from both sides uh, was uh, for me uh, reason to 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 work there a few years. And I made a lot of um, drawings, especially, and uh, a few uh, number of uh, paintings. Uh, the light of the shop, and especially also the people who came choosing, uh, debating with their wife uh, what print they should choose or not choose, and their um, attitudes at such a uh, um, now we spoke earlier of Breitner and his ability to express Amsterdam as a, as a concept and an idea and a kind of tradition that built out of that. Have there been other influences in your artistic? I know you were friends with the, uh, the painter from Harlem that did a lot of aquarelles, Verve. I know you've painted a lot of paintings of him. Were there certain influences in your your life, or people that you worked with, or people that you admired? Maybe for very also. It, uh, what you say is was not possible because you couldn't be a friend of Verwey. He was a very difficult person. Uh, but I had uh, to fight to enter at his studio, where I even could paint him and. But certainly his uh, way of looking, uh, I felt very uh, near to. And also Rick Wouters, the Belgian painter. But in general, yes, it's that way of uh, looking at things like, uh, in a way that nothing stands between you and what you are painting in that sense that I have no what the French call idée préconçue that's an I I'm not going to somebody or something with a fi fixed ID on the beforehand I let myself influence that model or by that model or by that landscape or what it is. Now, speaking of landscapes, one of the, the things that the Dutch are very rightfully famous for are the landscapes. It seems there's a special kind of light that permeates certainly the coastal region that you see in from the 17th century on recurring in the landscape painting. Is this something that has influenced the way you see things? Uh, I didn't man I didn't much landscape in my life. I think also that um, maybe the Americans have found a way out of the difficulty that landscape is disappearing. Uh, the real nature is is uh, diminishing. Uh, the, the nature in a, in a way of uh, the, the school of the Hague. And, but a man like Hopper, he found a way out. Uh, he painted a uh, gas oil uh, stand and uh, people in, uh, in uh, uh, before standing before a jukebox or in, in a hall with all uh, modern uh, apparatus. But um, that's uh, complete, like the Americans, with all the objections you can have have their own way of looking and working with uh, another nature, with another world, another. Uh, but in the sense we, uh, the, the way of Breitner and the way of, like I say, the School of the Hague, that's 
uh, there is a there is a I have the feeling um, it's on his retour. So I did some landscape, uh, but we are not anymore the generation of uh, you can envy it of constable who could uh, uh, work in an endless uh, landscape and uh, I don't think so. I think at one point in America, you were speaking of America, there was a, a school of painting. Many of them came from Dusseldorf, uh, Berstadt, and they went to America and they were so blown away by the light there that they became a, a school of painting of the light in America with these vast landscapes that they painted. Uh, Churchwood, who went into uh, even Central America and painted them. But in Holland here, there has been a long tradition of, of painting. It's a, a nation that has painted itself, its history, its morals, its ideas. But they've continued to paint uh, traditional themes, nudes, still lives. Do you see painting, as we come into the, the new millennium, as they would say, the role of painting continuing in a traditional sense? And what makes it timeless for you? I don't know. Uh, that's a very difficult question. Or not a difficult question, but the answer is difficult. Because, uh, of course, every time it has its own way of expression. If you see the, the Russian icons, uh, or how do you say it, icon uh, painting, uh, the way they were painted, or the Roman portraits, uh, the, uh, the old frescoes, uh, it, the, uh, every time finds its own uh, ways of expression with the, with the paint. And uh, I'm sure that now uh, the, the other ways of expression will come. Uh, it, I'm certain that it doesn't, the, the final uh, thing will be oil painting on canvas. That's a period of humanity. That's uh, uh, our Western uh, Renaissance world. But maybe uh, with all the modern uh, techniques, there come other means of expression. But there's one way is certain uh, the man will always need to express themselves their feelings, their, 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 uh, to, to, to tell things. But the materials and, and the, 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 the way of, of expressing will change, I'm sure.
here today at the Imakio, and there's a new exhibition. Maybe you could uh, tell us a little about uh, who it is and what it's about. It is um, a special theme in, the, in this case, and it is Hans Beins. Hans Beins is a very well known in Holland, a sculptor and painter. And um, this ex exhibition is about uh, antiquariat. Is that the word in English? Antiquariat. It is done in the Spiegelstraat, in a little shop by Arian Scappers. And he was there for about 12 years, sitting on and on and coming in and having some, some and, and just leaving there. And everybody was looking at him. No, nobody asked him about him. He was just sitting there and seeing at people and uh, uh, um, putting down the, the, the movement of people in the atmosphere of the whole, the whole shop. Uh, he is uh, about 75 now and he did quite a lot in his life. He was um, educated in Antwerpen and that was uh, uh, an academy uh, in, in the conservative idea of working. They just learned to design, to, to, to have the design, to look at the, at the model, look at, look at the nature and all that. And he liked that very much. After that, he began to, to, to look for his own language and he started to, to sculpt or to make um, uh, wall uh, tapestries and all that. He had been even at uh, Lursa uh, Atelier and um, there he learned a lot. After the war, in the war he was in, in Holland and after the war he just started painting and had the academy in Antwerp. And um, he, I think he is really is a painter. He is, um, uh, even in his sculptures, he painted, he's painting it. He is not a man of volumes, he's a man of atmosphere. He just takes people like they are, the movement of people, the, the, um, the atmosphere of people, of situation of light, and uh, just seeing at a line and people how they are moving. Now, how would you describe Hans Bayern's style of painting? Uh, it is you can you you cannot say it is realistic. Realistic. It is um, uh, a bit more post-impressionist, perhaps. He is just uh, taking the 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 essence uh, of the movement and not not the real uh, forms. But he is just you see it the the essence just the man. Uh, how he moves and how he's standing, and that's all. Now Hans was tell, telling me that he likes to work on a theme over a long period of time. I believe you've had uh, another exhibition with uh, Hans uh, with a theme. You want to yeah. tell us a little of that? Yeah, he did a Concertgebouw orchestra, and he was many, many times in the Concertgebouw, just sitting uh, somewhere in the, in the in the hall and looking at the conductor and at uh, the the violin players and and the hall orchestra, and that is about um, uh, the same. He just just on a little. He, he just keeps the movement of a hand or of a movement of a, of a stick of the violin, you know? and uh, some are very much uh, rich and, and fold up, but some are just the design, and I think that's the best. Now I noticed as I look around uh, your exhibition that you have a lot of those wonderful little red dots that every gallery owner loves. Yeah. Um, who are the collectors of Hans Bayern's paintings? That's difficult to say. It, it, um, uh, he has uh, built up uh, in the last 30 years, I think, quite a lot of really people really likes it it is um, uh, you have to pay a certain price so that uh, that's that's it but people who buy who are buying it really love the atmosphere so that's all right I think it's not for uh, only the rich people this, this just um, they like what they see on, on on it and like it very much for years and years and years. I had yesterday somebody who said I have a painting, and that is about 
50 years old, something like that. And, and I still see it every day. So, that's all right. Now, speaking of, of a value of a, of a painting, is Hans Bayern's uh, collected by museums and uh, has his uh, prices steadily gone up, uh, as would one would expect with a master artist? That's a bit of a problem. Uh, museum, um, he was all, always in a wrong period after the war, that it was abstract and sandberg, and uh, he denied it and he didn't want it, and there was uh, very much um, uh, fight about it. And they had a very little club of realistic uh, painters, they came together, but Sandberg did, didn't want it. Though the period of abstract um, paintings, he was denied by everybody, like some, some more uh, other paintings who just stayed doing the same way, just denied to become modern and become in the, in the modern uh, way of uh, commercial thinking, not he didn't. So he, he went on and went on and he just formed his own um, uh, people of uh, his, his, his uh, clients, his public. But he was denied, like many other ones are denied in, in, in uh, museum land. Well, the museums, um, who knows? Sandberg, of course, loved the Cobras and yeah. made, their, right. made their day. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank you very much. Um, tell us a little about the gallery and uh, how long the show will be here and if people can come and see it any time or when? Yes, it, it just started, so it will be until the 8th of, of November. And um, uh, people can come in every day, um, uh, 12, from 12, 12 to 5.30. And there's even a gallery weekend, the weekend of the 21, 22 um, October. Um, we will all be open. And there will be a, a orange flag outside where everybody can see it. And uh, on Sunday, uh, in the beginning of November, it will be open. And um, so only the Monday is closed. Well, thank you very much for being with us today. And it's an excellent uh, exhibition. And it looks like it's well appreciated. Thank you. Hi, this is David Hanna of Aspect Art. Today we're in the Museum Van Loon, one of those beautiful old canal houses filled with family portraits. Today we're here for a show of Hans Bayens, all of which are also portraits, so it's a very appropriate kind of exhibition. With us today to talk about this new show is Tonko Griva, who's curating this show. So join us now for Hans Bayens at the Museum Van Loon.
Tanka, maybe you could uh, tell us a little about the new exhibition you here, have here at the uh, Van Loon. Yes, we have a new exhibition. I'm very happy to have an exhibition by uh, Hans Beins. Uh, Hans Beins is a Dutch painter, still alive. He became uh, 75. And so on that occasion and on several other uh, reasons, uh, we're having here an exhibition about portraits he made of fellow uh, artists. Uh, Hans Beins is an artist who was born in 1924. Educated at the Institut de Bazaar in uh, Antwerp, uh, but he worked most of his time uh, here in Amsterdam. Um, he's painting several subjects, uh, building projects, uh, beach scenes, uh, but also uh, during his whole career uh, he made portraits uh, of artists uh, who he was friends of, befriended of, and who he visited uh, in their ateliers, and also who came to visit him in his atelier. Um, the Van Loon Museum is an, actually a museum who is kind of, in a way, is specialized in portraits. Uh, we have got a collection of about 80 portraits uh, of members of the Van Loon uh, family, uh, dating back from 1600 uh, till now. Uh, actually, the last uh, addition to the collection is a portrait uh, of Mr. Van Loon by Hans Beins. Uh, so his collection of portraits he made of fellow artists is very well fitting uh, into the Van Loon uh, Museum. Hans Beins is also um, very fitting here with his portraits uh, because I think if you have the collection of portraits uh, hanging in another museum uh, people would be a little bit um, disappointed that his other themes uh, are missing but in our museum uh, which is specialized actually in portraits they are very well fitting. And also it is uh, portraits are not the most uh, willing subject to sell, so most of the paintings uh, of fellow artists uh, he kept for himself. He made them for his own pleasure uh, as kind of uh, souvenirs and um, for his own memory and to give away to, to friends, but most of them he kept private in his own house. So therefore our museum is kind of a, a house a museum, house museum of the Van Loon uh, family, and also here in this house atmosphere, they like in an artist's house, uh, hanging uh, on the wall of the artist himself, and in a private uh, room, like friends you have uh, around yourself. Now I noticed as I looked at uh, some of the the paintings here that they have a striking resemblance for me anyway to Isaac Israel's and maybe Breitner. Uh, what were some of his influences and uh, was his group of painters uh, identified as a special group? Um, <clears throat> Bein started to paint in the 50s, early 50s. Uh, in Amsterdam you had then two groups uh, of artists. You had the groups of Sandberg who was uh, very promoting uh, the Cobra uh, group, but you also had uh, a group of, of artists who were um, refusing to to work uh, to to be revolutionary in their in their work, uh, but were working in a way in a traditional classic uh, painting way. Who were um, not willing uh, to to become abstract uh, painters, but were specialized in realistic uh, subjects. So they called the group the realiste, the realistic group. And they were very strong artists who were meeting each other at Arti and continued to work in, in a way of a tradition of painting who was started by Breitner and Israels. So in that way you can say uh, that he is continuing in, in the way Breitner painted his subject with, with bright strokes of, of paint, his dark colors. So in a way he's in the tradition of Breitner and Isaac Israels. I noticed also that uh, within this exhibition that you've mounted here are some sculptures. Was he uh, a well-known sculptor? Uh, Bynes uh, started to make clay uh, sculptures in the uh, mid-40s mid um, and also during the war. Uh, and when he went to Antwerp, uh, he, then he started to paint. So in the whole career he continued to make clay uh, sculptures and later on uh, clay sculptures became uh, bronze uh, sculptures. But he made some very well-known uh, monuments uh, here in the city of Amsterdam and also outside Amsterdam of literary, uh, literature uh, subjects, but also of um, uh, monuments for other uh, people. And also he made um, portrait busts 
of a fellow artists, and some of them are standing here. And very special is uh, the uh, hats he made of himself, which is very uh, unique in a way. And there are not many artists who made their own uh, bronze hat. Um, when uh, I asked uh, Hans Beins, are there other artists who did this? And then he mentioned the name of Rick Wouters. And Rick Wouters is also one of the artists he was very inspired uh, by. So it's nice that he, in a way he continued uh, Rick Wouters also by making uh, his own uh, portrait bust, which is also standing upstairs. He seems to have uh, created a, a number of uh, portraits of himself and of uh, fellow artists, but one of the rooms you've dedicated is actually a, a painter from outside of the Amsterdam circle, isn't it? Um, yes, one room is dedicated to portraits uh, Hans Bayern made of Kees Verwey. Uh, Kees Verwey is a very well-known Dutch artist uh, who died in 1995. Uh, he lived uh, in Haarlem. Uh, his name is Kees Verwey. Uh, he's very well known uh, by his aquarelles uh, and also paintings uh, of uh, domestic subjects. He made uh, flowers, uh, flower subject paintings and aquarelles and also aquarelles of his own atelier. And Hans Bayes visited them very, very frequently um, over a period of 20 years. So you can see in his paintings he made of, of Kees Verwey, you can see uh, Kees Verwey changing and you can also see Hans Bynes uh, changing in his, in his work. So it's a nice combination of two artists who are inspiring each other and visiting uh, each other uh, during a longer period. So there are seven paintings and I think they are one of the best uh, of, of the collection uh, who is hanging upstairs. Now this collection itself uh, comes from the artist mainly, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Um, it's uh, paintings who he's, he's keeping himself uh, at home. Of course, I think every artist is also selling uh, uh, pieces of art, but um, they are, um, he made them for his own pleasure. He never mentioned, uh, it not, was not on purpose made uh, to sell them. Uh, he made them out of friendship, he made them out of joy, uh, because he was um, looked at his fellow artists and was, was uh, stroken uh, by their faces and about their atel ateliers, about their, their atmosphere that was hanging around them. And there he was interested in and therefore uh, he made uh, the portraits uh, of them. And most of them, in the, in the, indeed, he, he kept them for himself, so they're still at his home and you can normally only see them uh, at the artist's house. You mentioned that uh, the Van Loon collection is primarily made up of portraits of one family that have uh, gone on. The last of the Van Loon males uh, is still living here in the house. Uh, when did he make the painting of uh, Mr. Van Loon? Uh, he made the painting uh, in 1987 um, when he was visiting uh, the Italian ambassador. Um, where Mr. Van Loon was also uh, there. So he didn't, it was not an official um, uh, subject. He was not asked to make the portrait. He was just uh, seeing Mr. Van Loon, and in a way, he did it for his own for his own sake. He made the portrait of Mr. Van Loon, and when we discovered him had made uh, the portrait, we were very uh, happy to uh, um, obtain uh, that painting for our collection, because in a way, it's it's different from all the other paintings, but it's very well uh, fitting uh, in the collection. We were very happy to have a good portrait uh, of Mr. Van Loon as the last edition of the collection. Thank you very, thank you very much for uh, being with us today. You're very welcome.
Niet niets. U zult zich wellicht afvragen, wie is die man die daar staat? Nou, velen van u zullen zich dat niet afvragen, maar sommigen wel. En ja, en dan komt altijd de vraag op, op dat moment, wie ben ik dat ik hier mag staan? <lacht> maar het blijkt toch niet een misverstand te zijn. Het prachtige werk wat u om u heen ziet, voor zover het niet door mensenlijven is bedekt, betreft eigenlijk alle mijn winkel in de Nieuwe Spiegelstraat. En toen Hans Baijens mij ook vroeg, eh, op zijn vorige tentoonstelling was in het museum van Loon, om de tentoonstelling hier te openen, heb ik ook direct ja gezegd. Want ik vind zijn werk altijd een bijzondere kracht en snelheid. Uitstralen. Het werk wat u hier ziet, en dat is niet voor iedereen meteen te zien, maar voor mij wel, ontspant een periode van 12 jaar. Hans is bij mij in, acht, in 1988 begonnen. En grotendeels, zoals iedereen hier ziet, zijn het uh, schetsen, spontane schetsen van meer of meer argeloze bezoekers. Uh, die staan te kijken naar prenten en het rare is dat Hans onmiddellijk de essentie van zo'n figuur of houding op dat papier weet te werpen. En uh, binnen ons vak van antiquaar is dat dus een, <coughs> iets bijzonders. Wij zien dat natuurlijk, alleen ik doe veel met uh, prenten. Die zijn gegraveerd op Ed's. Daar is iets, iets langer vaak aan over doorgewerkt. En de tekeningen zijn natuurlijk heel snel. Nou, binnen ons eigen vak is dan ook het gezegde: papier is geduldig. Het kan een tijdje duren voordat er een klant voor komt. Bij Hans Baijens is het papier absoluut ongeduldig. Er moet opgetekend worden en wel meteen. En in een enkel geval wordt er, en dat is maar zelden, wordt er verzocht aan iemand of hij eventjes kan blijven staan. Het rare is dat ook Hans daar bij mij in dat hoekje in de winkel zit. En uh, iedereen doet alsof hij er niet is. Terwijl ze ondertussen wel even worden neergezet. Goed, het is ook voor mij vandaag voor het eerst dat ik alle tekeningen bij elkaar omheen zie. En dat is in een totaal andere omgeving natuurlijk. En plotseling heeft het weer iets anders gekregen. Maar het is wel mijn winkel die erop staat. Maar het is eh, ook iets waardoor ik er nu wat met wat meer afstand naar kan kijken. Wat ook weer ontzettend leuk is. En het is in dubbele zin een heel mooi moment voor mij. Omdat het ook... Ja, net aan het eind van september, 20 jaar geleden, was dat ik zelf mijn winkel in de Spiegelstraat ben begonnen. Eerst op nummer 28, een paar jaar later op 32, waar deze tekeningen zijn ontstaan. Alle vrienden en familie die mij destijds daarbij geholpen hebben, dat vind ik het mooi moment, daarvan op lotje natuurlijk, eh, om die te danken voor alles wat ze destijds hebben gedaan, de steun die ik daarvan heb gehad. En het is absoluut niet voor niets geweest. En dat zie je hier om je heen. <lacht> uh, niet te vergeten, uh, er is ook nog een prachtig boek. Ja. Voor wie een te kleine beurs heeft om zo'n prachtige tekening te kopen, die kan het boekje kopen. <lacht> en daar heb ik dan ook in geschreven, maar dat is wat kort. Maar verder is een inleiding op tekenen van Peter Schaphoorn, die hier ook staat. En verder natuurlijk, en daar gaat het om, al die prachtige tekeningen van Hans. Waarvan het zo verschrikkelijk jammer is dat hij er vandaag niet is, maar ik hoop dat hij weer snel dat op de been is. Ja. Ja. Dank u wel.
to mold, to change light, to make uh, uh, the illusion of depth on a painting. It's very uh, uh God, what is that now? Uh, I can the word not find them. Delicate. It's okay. a delicate matter. A glazing is easily taken off. You should always know the technique, uh, the palette. Every time has its own palette and technique, more or less. Still, you have to do some tests before you can clean. Uh, glazings, most of the time you have to uh, renew them, change them, because many of them have more or less been deteriorated by uh, previous cleaning. Now, sometimes we, we all know, well, the, the famous uh, slashing of the Nachwag. Um, this, of course, required some restoration. What if a painting comes in torn or ripped or slashed like that? How, how do you restore that? What's necessary? Uh, it depends on what has been done with the painting before. If it's an unlined painting, we tend to keep it that way. So we make the, the, the tour, the, 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 the broken parts, we mend it uh, without any relining or, of, or support with as little as possible. Uh, it shouldn't